at one point in time, like you said, the the the, the consciousness in hip hop was real strong at a point when I came in, you know. But I saw that the more money it generated, the more tigers with claws got involved with it, you know, big wig industry tycoons or corporate America per se. And unfortunately, they control the media outlets. So consciousness is still out there. You have many artists out there that's still conscious. However, the media outlets know that if we pump in black awareness into the minds of these people, then that's gonna awaken them. That's not what they want. They wanna keep them blind and ignorant to the knowledge of themselves. So not to say that gang culture is, you know, ignorant or anything like that because when you research the origin of the crip or the blood situation in their inception it was positive what they came together for then over the years they you know they start you know dealing with different things you know the crime and stuff in that nature what have you so i think it has a lot to do with the media the people that control the radio people that control the tv you know images shape our lives Whatever forces out there that's promoting the images to the people, then that's how you get that. You know what I mean? And I think that, uh, you know, the consciousness is still out there. However, you see the gang culture is strong, man. I know brothers that's members of the nation of gods and earths and they blood now. Some of them crip now. And that just go to show me that, you know, you didn't really understand what you was dealing with. Understanding is your ability to see something for what it is and not what it appears to be. You might think it's a certain way, but it's actually not. If you grounded in culture, then you're gonna remain grounded in culture. What was will always be. That's what I always tell people. Like some brothers come up, to, yeah, man, I used to be in 5% or I used to be God. And tell you, yeah, used to was a rooster. I still am, <laughs> you know? What was will always be. So, you know, the gang culture, it's strong and it's prominent and I build with them too. I always let the brothers know, you know, the positive thing about y'all is the unity factor. It brought them all together, but y'all coming together for the wrong reasons. And that's the only thing, you know, science is 85%, man. Easily led in the wrong direction, hard to be led in the right. It's the bottom line, so the easiest way I could sum it up. And you know, unfortunately, you gotta look at the people that's, you know, involved in the gangs a lot of them come from broken family structures a lot of them are children that you know the, the fathers is missing in the black family a lot of these children are, are the product of babies having babies uh, you got young females out here 15 13 having kids you know they wasn't a parent they wasn't ready to be no parent and then they child is growing up and they never really reached adulthood mentally themselves so a lot of that you have to look at all of these different things as to why these kids are drawn to the gangs and you know it's like you can have a brother like me i'm positive I worked two jobs, educated, traveled around the world, make records or what have you, member of the nation of gods and nerves, all about positivity. And I show this to the little brothers, you know what I mean? It's not just so much about what you say, it's about what you do. It's going to leave a positive impact in the community. However, my man up the block with the rims on his bends, he got the ice, he always fresh. They see the pretty girls coming to see him, they looking at me and they fighting the holy war, they like damn he's educated i want to be like him but that seemed like it's more you know my thing so they fight a holy war with themselves and unfortunately a lot of them are drawn to that lifestyle to that world they feel like they belong to something a lot of these kids out here man and that's why the gang culture is so strong especially out here i never like when i was doing my thing in hip-hop i never thought that it would manifest out here i remember the first time i seen a blood and a crip out here. And I'm like, damn, this shit is out here now. And this had to be around about, around 95, 96, I started seeing them pop up. By 2000, they was in full bloom. You know, and my people's got a little something to do with that too. <laughs> my people's got a little something to do with that too. Well, I can't say they started it, however, Nordy used to have this group down with them called the Road Dogs. They was from Inglewood, California. They came out here, and I remember one time going on 18th Street to see Tretch and them, and the first time I went out there, they had a secret handshake, this, that, and the other. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is that? Whatever, whatever. They showed me the handshake. I met uh, Dujo and them, and right now, to this day, them brothers is some of like 
they like the G's out there in Inglewood. I seen a documentary recently with one of them on um, Gangland or one of them stories, you know, and uh, it's funny, man, you know, Tretch and them, they had Dujo and them out there, they had their little secret handshake. So this had to be around maybe 93-ish, 94-ish. I would ride through EO and they double I, this, that, and the other. And that was one of the, that, that somewhat was the birth of it out here. And it just spread it like a germ through North, Irvington, all over. Now it's everywhere. You know what I mean? It's not a city out here in Jersey where you can't find Bloods and Crips. You know what I mean? It is what it is. It's reality. You know what I mean? My job is to teach them, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strive to teach as many of them as I can. But a man got to choose this path for himself. All I could do is be a living example of what come out of my mouth. And that's what I do, you know. And I still strive because I love them. When I see the next black man and I see these people out here fighting and killing one another, every time a young brother gets killed, that's my brother dying. Every time a young sister gets raped, that's my little sister that got raped. Every time they fighting and killing one another, they're my brothers getting fighting and killing. You know what I'm saying? So a part of me dies each time one of them die. So I love them. And it hurts me to my heart to see the destruction because I know who's the author of pitting us against each other. Like, we black men. You know, you could take 10 black men, put them in a room, ask them who they are, see how many different answers you get. This one might say, I'm blood. He gonna say, I'm Crip. I'm a G. I'm African. I'm, I'm African American. I'm Jamaican. I'm Costa Rican. I'm this, that, and the other. Now, take them same 10 black men and take them in front of a judge. Judge don't care where you from or what you say you are. To him, you a black man. He gonna give you a black man's justice. And until we realize that, that look, when you come out your mother's womb, you black man. When you return to the essence, you're a black man. You could grow up your life saying, yo, I'm blood. You done planted the seed in your mind that you're blood. So you done planted the seed in your mind that you other than what you really are. But you're a black man. And until we wake up as a people and realize that this is what we are, we got to stop dealing with this separation and division. And it's, and it's across the board. Like with me, I'm a member of the Nation of Gods and Earth. But that doesn't keep me from building with Muslims. I can build with Masons. We can still come together for one common cause, and that's for the betterment of our people. So at the end of the day, man, it's strong. The, the gang culture out here, however, it's negative. You know what I mean? They're not building up the community. In all reality, they're tearing the community down, man. And it hurts me to my heart when I run into brothers that's my age, that's G's. <laughs> a lot of these brothers I came up in the streets with, and I ain't seen them in years, and I run into them, they G's. I'm like, wow, you know? But that's the reality of it. It is what it is. A lot of these people feel like they have to be involved with something to be a part of something, you know? It makes them feel like they're part of something, but they're part of something negative. It's not nothing positive, you know? To see more interviews from your favorite New Jersey MCs, watch Can't Forget New Jersey on Amazon Prime.